In this lesson, we'll finish up our discussion of the three basic ladder instructions, and we'll cover the top two rungs on our Getting Started walkthrough program. Here we've highlighted the three basic types of instructions that we've been covering one by one. We'll cover this one next. Our name for it will be XIO, which is how it's abbreviated in the books and in the software. So now we have a name. Next we need to concentrate on what does it do in the PLC's ladder program. When we ask that question in our boot camp classes, here are some of the most common answers that the students come up with. As you've come to expect, some of these rules are completely wrong and the others are confusing and misleading. So now the question, exactly what does the XIO do in the program? And here's a little box ready and waiting for the correct answer. Go look for a zero. You probably figured that one out based on the rule we learned for the XIC in a previous lesson. And now that we've nailed down our one simple little rule, let's get rid of that list before it confuses somebody. All the main ideas that we covered in our lesson on the XIC also apply to the XIO instruction, so we can save some time and cut right to the chase. Let's work through some examples. Here's an XIO instruction and some bit boxes in the processor. Each time the processor comes to an XIO instruction in the program, the rule says that he's got to go look for a zero. The address tells him that he's going to look in the bit box named switch A. So the processor goes and looks in the bit box named switch A. Does he see a zero? And the answer is yes. So the processor goes back to the XIO and marks it as a true condition. And now he's done with the XIO for this pass through the program. That was simple. Here's another. When the processor comes to an XIO instruction in the program, the rule says that he's got to go look for a zero. The address tells him that he's going to look in the bit box named O colon 001 slash 1. Some beginning students ask, but how can we use an output address for an input type instruction? Remember, the only purpose of the address is to tell the processor which particular bit box to go look into. There's nothing wrong with looking into an output bit. So the processor goes and looks in the bit box named O colon 001 slash 1. Does he see a zero? And the answer is no. Some students go too far and confuse themselves by saying, no, he sees a 1. Don't do that. Keep it simple. Just answer the question, yes or no. If the answer is yes, then the condition will be true. If the answer is no, then the condition will be false. So, does he see a zero? No, pure and simple. So now the processor goes back to the XIO and marks it as a false condition. And now he's done with the XIO for this pass through the program. By now you should see the pattern. Like all of our boot camp rules, it's simple and it always works. It works because it's based on what the processor actually does and not on watered down beginner level explanations. Summing up, here's the XIO instruction. It's an instruction, or in other words, a command, which tells the PLC processor to go look for a zero in a bit box. If the processor does find a zero, then the XIO will be considered true. If the processor does not find a zero, then the XIO will be considered false. Just remember that the XIO always tell the PLC processor to go look for a zero. It's just that simple. A quick review. Here are the three basic instructions that we set out to cover, and here they are, each with its own simple rule. And now that we've got these three basic instructions covered, it's finally time to pull together everything we've learned so far and see how it works in the top two rungs of our walkthrough program. We'll start with switch A in the off position and see what's going on in the processor several hundred times each second. First, the processor does step one of the scan cycle and updates the input bits. Do we have current here? No. So the bit contains a zero. And now the processor does step number two of the scan cycle and executes the ladders. The processor comes to this XIC instruction. The rule says, go look for a one. Do we have a one? No. So this is false. And so this OTE has false coming in. And the rule says, go write a zero. So the processor goes to the bit for lamp E and writes a zero into the box. Then the processor comes to this XIO instruction. The rule says, go look for a zero. Do we have a zero? Yes. So this is true. And so this OTE has true coming in. And the rule says, go write a one. So the processor goes to the bit for lamp F and writes a one into the box, which brings us to the end rung. And now the processor does step three of the scan cycle and sends the output bits to the output module. There's a zero in the bit, so the processor goes to the module and gives it a signal to turn the output off. There's a one in this bit, so the processor goes to the module and gives it a signal to turn the output on. And we're through with the scan cycle. And as long as nothing in the system gets changed, that same sequence gets repeated several hundred times each second. Now let's go to switch A and turn it on and see what happens. 
the processor comes around to do step one of the next scan cycle. Do we have current here? Yes. So the bit gets updated with a one. And now on to step two of the scan cycle. The processor comes to this XIC instruction. The rule says, go look for a one. Do we have a one? Yes. So this is true. And so this OTE has true coming in. And the rule says, go write a one. So the processor goes to the bit for lamp E and writes a one into the box. Next, the processor comes to this XIO instruction. The rule says, go look for a zero. Do we have a zero? No. So this is false. So this OTE has false coming in. And the rule says, go write a zero. So the processor goes to the bit for lamp F and writes a zero into the box, which brings us to the end rung. And now for step three of the scan cycle. There's a one in the bit, so the processor goes to the module and gives it a signal to turn the output on. There's a zero in this bit, so the processor goes to the module and gives it a signal to turn the output off. And we're through with this scan cycle. And unless something changes, that same sequence gets repeated several hundred times each second. The secret to really understanding PLCs is to nail down the rules that specify how each individual piece of the puzzle functions, and then learn a systematic step-by-step -step approach to applying those rules. We carry that same step-by-step -step approach through all of the material that we teach in our PLC boot camp classes, all the way from this is a bit through processing analog input and output signals and everything in between.